These shelves used to look so beautiful, full of plants. Oh, I loved them. And then my basement flooded twice and everything has just kind of been consolidated into this unfinished, really messy, section part of my basement. Today I'm finally going to get these cleaned off and moved back into my plant room to house some beautiful plants once again instead of all of these empty planters. Don't get me wrong, the planters themselves are very beautiful, but you know, these shelves just deserve to be home to some of my favorite plants. We're going to be moving them onto this wall that gets pretty good evening sunlight. I'm also going to install a grow light system. I'm really excited to finally get my plants consolidated again. My plants have just kind of been pushed to different little corners in not as pleasing to the eyes ways but today we're going to start fixing that. This has been in the back of my mind for a while so let's just like get into it. Let's get into it. I'm gonna stop yapping. Let's get into it. Of course, I gotta move all of this stuff out of our way. It'll come back. You'll see this once we start placing plants again. But I got a vacuum. I'm throwing Brian and I under the bus right now. This isn't actually like laid carpet. We just had a carpet place cut a piece of carpet to the size of this room and we've sat it down in here because we weren't sure if we had our flooding issue adequately fixed yet. Anyway, so we've just kind of been holding off on finishing the basement until we were absolutely sure that the problem was fixed. We don't have baseboards in because they molded from the flood. It was a disaster, you guys, an absolute disaster. Before those floods, our basement was finished. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the story there. That's why there are, that's why there's not a baseboard here. It doesn't really bother me because we don't like have people down here. This is really just where I do plant things. Okay. For the time being, I'm just gonna move all the planters off of here onto my six foot terrarium. This terrarium did actually live in the room uh, that we're moving the shelves into for a long time. I'm kind of contemplating what I wanna do with this. It's just kind of big, it takes up a lot of space and where we're gonna have to refinish our basement, I am considering passing it on to someone. Although I am trying to talk Ryan into getting a pet snake and building that out to house the snake. <laughs> I've also considered doing like a giant carnivorous plant setup display type thing similar to my Ikea cabinet upstairs, but we'll see. If you have any cool ideas for this, like please let me know. It just, yeah, it's six feet long. It takes up a lot of space. I am going to move all the planters onto the top of here. Chick food. I'm also trying to talk Ryan into letting me get a couple more chicks so I could do a, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> if you want to help a sister out and you're considering getting chicks, but you would like to see a chick growing video or like how to take care of day old chicks to the point that they lay, like please leave a comment because I would love to do that video. I unfortunately was a little bit too stressed out at the time I got chickens to do that video, but if I could get a couple of chickens now to show you that process, like I would love that. So leave a comment so that I can show Ryan and be like, hey, all these people would watch this video. <laughs> I'm a little conniving, I guess. My shelves are emptied off and I'm gonna wipe them down now, but let me show you what I've been working on. <laughs> oh, I bonked my head. I am just gonna wipe everything out of here onto the floor because we are going to be vacuuming. So I'm gonna save myself a step now. I'm going to go ahead and move them now. 
um, before wiping them. Well, they're kind of heavy. Kind of dark in here. It'll be easier to see what needs wiped off in the better lighted room. These diva soft hands are not cut out for this. I used to have really sturdy hands because I used to lift like pretty heavy weights. If I do say so myself, but I've definitely gotten out of that since having two kids. Before. I don't know. Yes. And then I can put these shelves. I really should screw them down, but I'm not going to <laughs> because I'm lazy. <laughs> And there are two more shelves, one to go here and one to go down there. But for now, I'm just going to leave them so that I can fit some of my taller plants in the middle here. Well, that doesn't really make much sense because then I can't really fit too much here. These shelves do also have some water damage, so Normally I would link what I'm using in this video, but I don't actually like super love these for plants because there are a lot of places with water damage and I haven't even spilled all that much water on them where it's like kind of cute and big and inexpensive for a piece of furniture. I don't think it's great for plants. Like I said, these do have some water damage and there's definitely a lot of spots on these, but I will say that when I bought these and really used these in my plant room, it was in my like plant buying craze where I just bought like too many plants too quickly and I didn't have planters for them. I didn't have saucers for them. So overall, my plant keeping methods were a lot messier. Like it was just messier, a lot messier. I've since gotten that under control, fortunately. I'm glad to be in a much better, cleaner, more tidy and comfortable place with my plant keepings. A lot less stressful, a lot happier, a lot healthier too. I gotta say a lot, lot healthier, both for the plants and for my mental well-being. Feels good. <laughs> Almost done. All clean. Let's move some plants. Bismarck is down here. He is such a sensitive boy. He's like shaking because he has a hard time with change. He has a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Oh, good boy. Kai's also here. So I got the mocha chocolate rice car I got for my birthday, and I got everything. You got everything for your birthday? Yeah. How about you go get some popsicles out of the freezer for you and Rai Rai? Yes. Now to add plants. I'm so excited. Okay, first I'm going to move this ficus audrey over here. A perfect fit. Well, it's a little snug. <laughs> but it works. There are a few plants that I am certain I know where I want them moved. This Synconium white butterfly is just in way too high of light right now, right there in the windowsill. So I do want it moved here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do have quite a few plants that need to be repotted. This Dioscoria, ooh, this Dioscoria discolor being one for now gonna place it here but just this is one that I'm definitely is gonna be changing I'll probably put it back on the shelf once I find a planter I like but for now eh, it works the cool thing about having the shelf down here and the fact that I'm going to add new lights in a little bit is that 
I can propagate in this room, whereas before I didn't really feel comfortable because the light wasn't like amazing. I'm gonna make this shelf here my propagation shelf. I have a few different little Cebu Blue uh, vessels. These are all propagating in water. For those of you that have been on my channel for a while now, y'all know I'm a little bit nosy about my propagations. For me, having propagations in my line of sight constantly, which these were, they were living upstairs. I was looking at these guys like maybe 10 times a day, probably every hour that I was awake, I was checking on these roots because it's like a compulsive thing for me. I can't not stare at them, so. Having them downstairs, <laughs> it'll just be a much more manageable, like healthy propagation experience for me to not be checking on these constantly. And I'm not kidding, I was checking on them constantly. So I'm excited to have space down here for extra propagations. Oh, this is a big move. This is a big, big move. These are a couple of jam jar propagations. I have a Begonia Pavonina in this one and a Begonia Nahungensis in this one. Yeah, those are for Jacob. And I'm excited to also not be checking on them constantly. Uh, here I have, I'm gonna show you, cause I know I've shown these on my channel. These are a bunch of um, Peperomia Hoffmannii propagations for my old junior high locker partner bestie, Natasha, who we recently um, got reconnected. I'm going to keep these down here again for a more healthy propagation experience because I cannot, I cannot keep my hands off of propagations. It's not healthy. Oh, let's move the baby jades next to mama jade. Ah! I love that. Syngonium three kings. Let's just put these here. I've gotten so many comments on the video I talked about this saying that the plant is molding and I'm giving it too much water, but I promise you I'm not. Those white bits are not mold at all. They are actually roots. I just wanna clear that up because so many people are saying that it's mold. I promise it's not, they are roots. Wow, that is some killer lighting in here. Good morning. Where do I begin? Let me catch you up. So yesterday, Ryan installed my Highland Track grow light system. This is the one from Soltech. You've probably seen it if you're on Instagram, especially. I love them. This is my second Highland Track system. These light systems are great for rooms where I kind of move my plants around a lot because you can twist the, like I'll show you, you can move them to face different directions. I'll be able to put more shelves over here and have like an actually dedicated plant room, which I am so excited about, but I have just been consolidating everything. A lot of my plants into like shelves like this because I'm not going to get into it right now. I'm not going to get into it right now, but yeah, I, I do really like having like a dedicated plant space because I just want to feel like I'm hanging out in a jungle and it's kind of hard with my everyday life situation right now. So that's to come, that's to come. I'm going off on a little bit of tangents. Anyway, Ryan installed that for me. This one is not the hardwired one. The one in the other room is the hardwired one and I didn't realize that. So we like went to take apart the boob light and realized that we could actually just hang it here on the wall, which is going to be perfect. I'm gonna turn this on, but it kind of messes with the lighting in here. So I'm only gonna show you it on for a second before we get into our next thing, topic. Yeah, see, it's like so bright. Plants love it. I'm gonna turn off those lights for a second because it's giving me a 10 gallon. Well, I have, I have a 10 gallon. The light is so bright, it just really accentuates the 10 gallon. I do have a big head. It doesn't look big, but it's like huge. Hats don't fit on my head. So I've got my shelf kind of set up and here's the thing with my process for like setting up shelves and stuff, I just kind of will move everything, gradually move everything that I want on the shelf into the general vicinity and kind of tinker around with them for a while until I find a configuration I'm happy with. It's not something that I can just like throw everything on here and it's all at once going to look amazing. There are some people here on the tube that they just set their plants out and they just 
automatically look spectacular. But unfortunately, that's just not me. I have to like really eyeball it for a while before I'm able to make it look good. At some point, I am usually able to make it look pleasing to the eye. I'm gonna show you everything I have out here, like a little tour of the shelf and everything I have growing on here, a little bit about the plants, but oh my gosh, you guys, this morning I was watering all of my plants here, uh, drinking my coffee. I've been a little bean water girl lately. As I was watering plants on here, I have a freaking plant pest. It has been years since I've had a plant with this issue and it is on my Dioscoria discolor. I got it at the beginning of winter. Me and this plant are just having so many issues. So if you remember, I bought this plant because my friend Jacqueline, I bought this plant because she bought this plant, but it's just been like problem after problem for the both of us since we've got it. First, two months after I got this plant, I had the mealybug outbreak. They were just tiny little babies all over this plant. Her plant also had mealybug babies after around the two month um, span of having it. So we're both pretty confident that it came from this plant, but now that it's warming up, my plant has developed another pest and it is freaking scale and they are huge. They are the biggest scale I've ever seen on a plant. Um, again, I don't have too much experience with scale though. Ugh. Obviously my plant doesn't look good, but I just thought it was because my basement is so cold in the winter and then it heats up pretty quickly into the spring. So I just kind of thought it was going through a little bit of a, an acclimation period, like dropping leaves so that it could acclimate to the new temperature. But no, it is definitely scale. In my plant collection tour video, I thought I saw scale on this plant, but I didn't actually look close enough, I guess, because they are freaking everywhere and they're chubby, they're ugly, they're nasty. So told Jacqueline to check her plant to see if it has them. We'll see if it does. But when I texted her, I was like, I'm just gonna throw mine out because I am so sick of it. I am, I'm so sick of this plant having issues. <sighs> I'm not gonna throw it out. I'm gonna go ahead and treat this plant. So I'll show you how I'm gonna treat this. And also I wanna move another little table in here since these lights are so like amazing for getting plants to grow huge. I'm gonna move another table into here so that I can fit more plants underneath them. Why not, right? Okay, let me just set this aside because I don't want these spreading to the rest of my plants. I did this morning move this plant, the nursery pot, into this cover pot. So I'll show you that. Um, and watered it. Like I said, I was watering all of my plants. First, just cut any of the growth that doesn't look great. So pretty much this whole vine here, most of the vine over here, just to help get rid of like how many leaves I'm going to have to check going forward to make sure that the scale is gone or still there. Hopefully gone though, hopefully. So let's see. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut it like here and here. I'm gonna throw away all of this, much of the plant. Actually, there's some more I'm probably gonna cut over here. Just some dead leaves though. And sometimes the systemic just works better on the leaves more toward the bottom of the plant and it doesn't spread as much toward like the longer vines. So it'll just take more and more applications, a lot more time to get rid of the issue all the way down the complete vines. So by cutting it back like this, yes, it's kind of sad, but like this growth already looked bad. So I guess it's not that hard for me today. Sometimes it is hard to do that, but it's just honestly in the long run, it's so much easier to cut the plant back and have less to focus on and worry about. I'm gonna also cut off any of the leaves that I just think are a little bit ugly because yeah, if they're ugly leaves, why am I gonna wanna spend time pest managing? Might as well just get rid of them. Kill two birds with one stone. Ew, I like don't even wanna touch it. This thing right here is a scale. There's another one right there, right here, and right there. But yeah, I'm gonna go throw this away, hang on. 
Uh, so, oh my gosh, this stem is just completely coated. Right here has them all over it and that leaf has them too. They are all over. I'm just gonna cut this leaf off. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna cut it totally back. Because here's the thing, at this point with how many scale are all over this plant, if the plant itself doesn't grow back, I like kind of don't care that much. Hi bud. For a minute there, I thought I was going to try and salvage some of the matter that's here already, but it is not worth it. That, that all of these vines actually are like coated. So, hey bud. Um, hmm. I you want to sit by me? Yeah. I shouldn't have cut this one because there's none on this. I'm going to stick it back in there and see if I can't get it to grow. Dang it. I wish I wouldn't have cut that one off because those leaves are so pretty. Yeah, let me show you just how coated these were. Here you can see they like blend in. It's actually showing up a little better on camera than it even looked in real life to me. A big fatty right there. There's one there. In this kind of lighting, you can see them actually pretty well, but I promise I missed these clearly for a long time. Um, they're also on the back of the leaf. There, there, they look kind of yellow. Yeah, oh, there, there. Sick. So um, not worth it. I'm just going to toss as much of this matter as I can. That sucks so bad, you guys. I'm pretty sad about this. Anyway, to treat this and get rid of hopefully all of the scale, I did decide to use Bonide Systemic because I'm not playing around with pests anymore at this point. I am just in a stage of life where things are busy <laughs> with, you know, my kids. Ryan just got a new job. We have a lot of big life changes happening right now. And I'm not trying to fall behind like I previously have in my plant keeping to get ahead of it. I'm just treating with systemic for the time being. And I will go back to a more mild, pest management method once my life slows down a little bit but for right now this is what i'm using it works really well it's just a very easy and super effective way to deal with an issue where i know that all the effort i put into it it is 100 going to work to get rid of the pest so yes i just sprinkled a little bit of this to the top of the substrate and then watered it through and I will repeat maybe twice a month the next few months. Ew, I hate them. Barbecues and pecan pies. Oh my. When I'm so far from you, Texas, all I can do is cry. <laughs> Shelf is here. Um, and this is going to be staying right here, away from the others. Not that it really matters because that plant was mixed in with a whole bunch of my other plants for like a long, long time now. There's the scaly plant and the rest of them. And I'm not, I'm not gonna move anything onto this table actually right now, just because I am feeling a little overwhelmed by the, you know, scale and I'm not wanting to move anything else into this room until I know I have that under control but I am going to give you a tour of all the plants I've moved onto this shelf that I think are really going to appreciate these amazing lights and how much better I'll be able to care for them now that they're consolidated into one place here. It's just so much easier to take care of plants, especially when you have a large collection, when they're all in one space. Water, like boop, 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 really easily instead of having to walk back and forth through different rooms of the house to make sure you got everything you know. So yeah, that is a benefit of having plant shelves like this. Here is a straight on view of the plant shelf and the kind of setup we have going on right now. 
I did move my Syngonium White Butterfly here. It was previously sitting on the windowsill down here. And I just think the temperature next to a window, especially a basement window where it is a little bit colder, but also a little bit warmer in the summer is a little bit too much for a Syngonium. And I just don't wanna risk it because this was my grandma's plant. Yeah, I did recently repot it, which I think is why we have so much yellowing down here and why the plant looks a little bit messy but you can see where it has started to grow back a little bit it does look a little more uniform and like crisp so i'm just gonna let it grow in a little bit more and kind of acclimate itself to this new location before i mess around and pull off any yellow leaves or anything like that um, in the back there i did move my crown of thorns just because I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed in my upstairs bathroom, it was kind of hard to keep it clean. And that is a bathroom I have to clean all the time, every three days. So I've just wanted to move plants off of the surfaces in there for the time being. This is my whisk fern, which lived upstairs on my Ikea cabinet before I moved it down here. But I am moving it down here because it is getting a little bit tall for the shelves there. And it was kind of... I don't know, it just where it like fans so much, it was kind of blocking a lot of the light from the plants below it. This is another Syngonium. This is my, it, it's called a Three Kings or um, Jade Syngonium. If you're into Syngonium, I highly recommend, especially if you like variegated plants. I, I think this is such a beautiful plant. All right, this is my Adenia Glauca, which I did pot up in my last video because I've been kind of struggling with it, but I'm hoping that, I, I'm hoping that the light here will help wake it up for the summertime and it'll just burst out with new growth. Next to that is my Anthurium Warraquianum, which has lived upstairs in my bedroom, but again, with the having to vacuum constantly and like move things around, I don't think this plant was really appreciating it. It just, every time I moved it, it would drop a leaf and the next leaf would come out with holes like that. So a lot of you told me that this plant does not appreciate being moved around. So I just think this is going to be a little bit more of a permanent spot where I'm not going to have to move it so much. So hopefully it starts to do better um, and gets comfy. Last shelf up top, I put my Jade Crassula. Actually, no, let's move it. Yeah. Right there so I lied it's actually going to live right here we do have some of the babies from it which are getting quite big these were leaf props from that plant next door is my Hoya Ganungading here is the next like level of plants is my Pinguicula I think this one is the Esseriana or something like that which I love this plant. It is getting its red back, which makes me really happy. Next to that is my Sansevieria Blue Star Clone Variegated or something along those lines. And my little booby cactus, which is looking much, much better these days. Lots of root growth. In my spring plant prep video, I did just get this potted up and I still, for the life of me, cannot remember the name, but there it is. Hanging on, doing okay, doing decent. Little Hoi Memoria I'm propagating for my sister and I did paint this little terracotta planter. I painted some flowers on it, which I think is pretty cute. And my Stefania Erecta, which kind of woke up for the summer. Has a little bit of green there, but I don't know. I don't know, okay, we'll see. Shelf below is, this is a Syngonium T25, which is actually a pretty uncommon Syngonium. It's, it's really hard to come across these, so I feel very fortunate to have it in my collection because I do just freaking love Syngonium. They're just so cool. This leaf is awesome. You can see how interesting the variegation is. Um, and the way you can tell it's a T25 is if you, because there's also a T24 and there's another one that's pretty similar to this, but if you are wondering if it is a true T25, if you, if you flip the leaf over and you can see the white variegation through the bottom, it's a T20, it's the T25. Pretty cool. Love this plant. We got my leadhead glass terrarium, which has a lot of oxalis and live sphagnum moss. Ideally, the moss in here will just fill this up and then I'll take off the top and it'll just be like a cube. That'll be so satisfying. Here we got little Rai Rai. 
hanging off my leg like usual. This is my kangaroo fern, which you guys have seen many, many times on my channel. Growing pretty well. It is losing a bunch of the older leaves from the back, but it's just the life cycle. Um, is this other leaf ready to fall off yet? No. And I think that, I think it's gonna fill in here really nicely because each of these little, so this is the rhizome, but each of these little white bumps you see are going to be new leaves. Oh yeah, see? One is kind of starting to unravel right there. I did take a time lapse of these leaves growing. Um, it was a really, really fun process. So I'm excited to be able to watch that process again. Although the time lapse thing was a pain in the booty. So I don't know if I'll ever be doing that again of, of plant growth. And here is a variegated heart leaf. Those are the heart leaf roots. Um, and then a bunch of Peperomia Hoffmannii cuttings that have also rooted that I took for my friend. I'm going to get these potted up here soon. I just haven't gotten around to it. And yeah, another little propagation shelf. In the back here, I have three containers of Cebu Blue cuttings for my shop that are pretty well rooted. I, they definitely have rooted quite a bit. So these are ready to be potted. I'm just haven't gotten around to it. And then I have my jam jar propagations, really great for begonia propagation. Okay, and the shelf below, I have my Euphorbia obesa, a bunch of Syndapsis Silver Hero cuts, um, and my Passiflora trifasciata, which I did just chop up. It's starting to grow back though, which is cool. On the ground there is another leadhead glass terrarium. This one is just full of a bunch of begonia, which have started to grow. Oh, and also some Selaginella. So I'm excited for this to grow in because it is going to be a like rainbow a rainbow begonia terrarium. Really excited for that. And on top of there is another syngonium. This is a syngonium ribbon, another one of my favorites. I love long skinny leaves like that. This actually is one of my favorite uh, syngonium varieties. And I also love, like outside of the skinny leaf thing, I love when they get lobed like this. So really cool plant. And right here is a begonia cleopatra I propagated last summer. And it's a little bit sad, it killed off a bunch of leaves, but I think it's because my basement is so cold. And so hopefully once summer comes around, it'll pop off. Uh, and then the last plant on the shelf is this begonia, or not begonia, <laughs> a Hoya white bergier, which I actually wanna move this one higher up, I think, so it can be a little closer to the sun. Yeah, we'll move her right here. Yeah, there's actually nothing on the bottom shelf right now. I'll probably put like empty pots down there. These two moss poles, I will probably move onto this white table where I put the jade, um, but I'm gonna wait until the scale situation is under control before moving anything closer to that plant. Here is my philodendron brantiana. Honestly, I didn't love this plant at first, but now that I have it on a moss pole, it just grows so much more full. I don't know, it just grows so much better. It looks so much nicer. So definitely glad I decided to put that one on a moss pole. And another kind of same story is a monstera Celta Picana, which I didn't love. And I was like, hey, let me just throw it on a moss pole. I kind of wanted to try out some moss poles. And I think these were two really great options to start out with on the moss pole, especially because this Celta Picana is now putting out much bigger leaves. Um, it definitely likes this life a lot better than just like hanging somewhere, which is how I have historically had it growing. And look, this leaf did open up with a fenestration and I was like, oh yay, it's gonna start doing that again. But then suddenly started out putting little leaves and the big leaves haven't put out any either. So I don't know, so weird. Plants are just weird and they're gonna do what they're gonna do. And the last plant on this little boot tray thing is a Syngonium red spot tricolor, which is not too happy with me. Had mealy bugs. And I didn't realize for a minute, but I have by now treated it. So I think that that's under control. The new leaves are coming out a lot better, healthier looking than these older leaves. This is another new-ish one, although it is kind of yellowing. What? Look at that. Look at that leaf. It has extra lobes there. That's so cool. Um, yeah trying to get that dealt with. It's a process. Even with the systemic, like it still is something you have to do multiple times, multiple rounds of. So I think I'm on round two 
with my plants in here, usually by round, usually after round three, maybe round four for really, really infested ones. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, three or four rounds is usually when the situation is resolved for me in my experience. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe it changes though. Let me know. Let me know. All right. So sitting in the corner back there, I have my ficus Audrey. Um, the jade I just moved there. And then on the other side of these are clothes I'm sending to thread up. Uh, so excuse that mess. This is my, what are you? What are you? It's a yucca cane, which is coming back to life after I killed it last year by underwatering it. Um, okay, and then, yeah, that little oh, beautiful, beautiful plant. Don't get me wrong, but wow, 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 wow. Issue after issue. That is what we have going on. I think it's really pretty. So okay. that was setting up my plant shelf and a whole bunch of other stuff. That is today's video. I want to turn on the lights since I just treated everything with the systemic. I want them to be able to soak up as much water as possible. So the higher light you're able to give a plant when you're treating it, the better. But of course you have to keep it adequately watered. Don't get me wrong, it needs to be very well watered. Um, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. I think my brain is just a little bit scattered after the scale chaos this morning. I had an idea for what I was gonna do. I was gonna like reorganize my upstairs plants and my upstairs plant shelf, but I am just kind of not in the mood to do that anymore. So we're gonna save all of that for another day, but thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please let me know any thoughts, questions, opinions, ideas, anything. Leave that comment. It's very, very helpful for my channel. And I do really enjoy reading through the comments. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I hope you enjoyed. That's it for this one and I will see you next time. Bye.